The other aspect of it is pride towards people, uh, belittling people, degrading people, putting down people. First and foremost, this is only based on self-admiration. Unless someone admired themselves so much, they would have not looked down at other people. They would have seen their own faults. Because we are all, we are all sinful. We all have our shares. Some of us, the sins which we commit are outwardly, so the rest of the people are able to see them. And some of them we do them in secret. And some of them are related to the heart that no one sees. But everyone has a share of sins. We're not angels. The person who admires himself so much is neglectful of his own sins. Otherwise, when he sees other people sinning, he would remember his issue, his own set of problems. Secondly, it entails mocking and degrading Muslims in speech and action. And this happens very often when someone used to be misguided and then Allah guides them. And Allah guides them particularly to the path. The path where the truth is. Not, it is not necessary that they will be able to travel on it correctly. But once they're guided to the actual truth, it is very common that people start thinking, Khalas, I'm going to Jannah. I'm going to Jannah and everyone else is going to Jahannam because I'm on the path. I'm part of this group. I'm part of this whatever. And this starts growing in someone's mind. And it may take him so far away you won't even believe. Major disasters and calamities have happened to the Muslims in this day and time because of this mentality. That I'm the only guided person, everyone is misguided. I'm, I know that you know everything I have, every position I hold is correct, and everybody else is, is wrong, and everyone else is misguided except my, myself, or these few people that are with me. And this is a manifestation of arrogance. Yes, when we are upon the truth, there's an element of confidence, which we do not deny. Because the truth, it... it, it provides power in and of itself. The truth itself generates power. And that power is utilized by the one who's upon the truth. However, there's a fine line which we need to be very careful concerning. When are we going overboard with the confidence so that it becomes arrogance and belittlement of Muslims even though they don't deserve to be belittled. Now, some may say, well brother, you're contradicting yourself as usual. Because people always claim that I'm doing so, even though I try to explain to them that I'm not. But I may do occasionally. Um, at times we have mentioned the names of misguided people. Deviant people. Not people who are good, but had some issues. No, no. Deviant people. People of Bidah. The scholars, going all the way back from the time of the Sahaba until today, and it's part of the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that the people of innovation and deviance are to be belittled and humiliated. They don't get the same treatment as a regular pious Muslim who is upon the Sunnah. And they use as an evidence the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحَدُّونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ أُولَٰئِكَ فِي الْأَذَلِّينَ Verily those who oppose Allah and His Messenger will be among the most humiliated. And uh, the ulama of tafsir have commented on this ayah, and Imam Malik rahimahullah, has also deduced from this ayah and other ayat that this is concerning the people of Bid'ah because the people of Bid'ah are opposing Allah and His Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, uh, one of the Salaf had said that. Uh, whoever man waqara sahib bid'ah faqad a'ana ala hajm al-islam whosoever venerates and honor a person of innovation he has aided in the destruction of Islam so we're saying here the people of innovation 
who are calling to their innovation. Not people who made mistakes, because we may all fall into innovation one way or another, unintentionally. But the people of innovation that are without a doubt the, the misguided, which the scholars have, the scholars who are reliable have addressed, concerned not particularly the person, but the, the belief or the deviance thereupon, the deviance itself, once we have identified that, then they do not receive the same treatment. Yes, if we are with them, we try to give them dawah and, and what have you. But if they reach a point where, where dawah is ineffective, they're not responding to the truth, then they will not get the same treatment that the regular believer gets. So that's why we all need to free ourselves from innovations and sins in general so we may maintain izzah which Allah Azza wa has promised for the believers. Otherwise, the hypocrites who used to do salah and give the shahada and go for jihad and do hajj and pay zakah and do everything, Allah Azza wa belittled them so much that he said, إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ The hypocrites will be in the lowest level of the hellfire, below the Jews and the Christians and every, every, everybody else. That's the belittlement of Allah Azza wa for them. In the dunya, Allah prevented the Prophet ﷺ from praying on them when they die. And the, upon the kuffar, this is part of the belittlement. Ibn Umar anhu, a man came to, it, to him and said, I love you for the sake of Allah. He told him, I hate you for the sake of Allah. I hate you for the sake of Allah. You elongate your adhan and you get paid for it. Now, of course, today, some will say, oh, this is harsh. This is harsh. But they were trying to keep it real. What they were trying to do is be, be upfront. He doesn't want to do mujamala. doesn't want to be, the, you know, double-faced or it's a, like, it may be a form of hypocrisy. He just told them to it as it is. That's what, it, that's what I feel. That's what you're doing. So this is now degrading someone. I mean, if someone said this to you, you're not going to be a happy camper. You tell someone, Allah, for the sake of Allah, he says, I hate you for the sake of Allah. But there are times and there are reasons why the people who may go against the sunnah, it creates this kind of friction with those who follow the sunnah. But we need to deal with it with wisdom. It is not to be done in a, in a manner which creates more fitna and more problems. But I'm just mentioning to the exception to the rule so you may know. Now.